So this video is once again an extremely detailed video and I will show you how I used one light to create this image. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So welcome once again to my small home studio. For you guys who are new to the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area of 2 meters wide and about 3.5 meters deep. We are, however, extending a little bit here, but we are not using the full depth of this shooting area that I created. So technically, we are still shooting within the 3.5 meters depth of this particular area. So before we continue, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see some of the images that I've created, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So what are we working with here? Basically, we have one light here, which I'll talk about later, but we have here a white backdrop. But this white backdrop can easily be any white wall. And this is the key, we need a white wall. Because you saw from the image that I showed you earlier, we are creating a high contrast black and white image with a white background. So how am I able to achieve that using just one light? Well, the light that I'm using today is the Profoto B10X Plus. It's a 500 watt studio strobe. However, you could use any light at your disposal. I just wanted to use the Profoto today. But again, any light will do. Now, as per the modifier, the modifier we will be using is over here. Now, I'm going to mount that on the Profoto using this one. It's, a, it's actually an adapter for MagMod so that, well, that is a MagMod modifier. So I can use it with my Profoto head. So I'll install this adapter here first because I want to show you something about this modifier that I truly love and why I feel that it's fantastic. Well, number one. It's very light. So you can see it's a very, very light modifier. And with MagMod, it connects via magnets to this adapter here. And here is where this one becomes pretty cool. Number one, the diffuser, well, it fell off now, is actually hidden here inside a pocket. So all you have to do is stash it here and you're okay. And if you notice, it is actually sewn in so that you won't lose it. Now, here's the thing. All you have to do is you see this part here, right here, this plastic thing. And all you have to do is do this, push it, and that's it. That's how simple it is. This is the 42 inch MagMod MagBox. Now, look at how you're actually gonna install the front diffuser. All you have to do is zip it up. Makes life so much easier, right? So here, you've got your 42 inch modifier now. Now you could also use any modifier. You don't have to use this MagMod, but it's best that you get a relatively big modifier. Maybe uh, give or take 85 cm and above should be okay. So we just mount this one here and we'll put it aside. Now I wanna discuss also the camera that I will be using today and my light setup. But for me to properly do that, I'd have to call in my wife Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in babe. Hi babe. Hi, babe. All right, it's been a while since we've shot, right? So basically what we're gonna do here is I will have my light. Well, let's do it now, actually. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about the camera first. All right, okay. So the camera that I will be using is my Sony A7 Mark IV with a 50 millimeter 1.2 GM lens. The reason why I'm using a 50 millimeter is because I wanna shoot a half body shot of Coco. Now, if you take a look at my camera height, I am basically about chest level of Coco, which is the perfect height for a half body shot. Now, let me bring out my trusty um, measuring tape again, but let me discuss first basically my settings. Now, everything that you're gonna be seeing is straight out of the camera and I'm recording everything here in my Atomos Ninja V. Let me turn off my, basically my live view. So this is what I am getting. My settings are 1 over 1600 f1.2 ISO 100 and I can somewhat see a little bit of light so maybe I'll stop down and put it at f2. At f2 right now it's pitch black. Now I'm going to turn off my live view so I can see what I'm shooting or I can see Coco while I'm shooting her. 
Now my light, my pro photo, as I discussed earlier, will be triggered using this one. This is the Pro Photo Connect Pro. All right, so what else? Now, the, you guys have been asking also about the ball head that I use. This is the RRS BH55. And this tripod is a Manfrotto 055 carbon fiber. Now, the camera is about, let me see, 58 inches away from Coco. The camera height or the lens height is about 50 inches. Coco's chest level is about 50 inches also. So more or less camera height is connect, correct there. Oh, by the way, what I'm using to hold on to my monitor is a small rig spider crab. It's fantastic. Okay, so how do we get that particular image using just this one light? We can easily say that, oh, you know what? The light was probably somewhere here towards Coco. And you know what? Let's give that a shot and see how it actually looks like. So let me turn on the light. And let's see how this one will turn out. Let's have it directly towards Coco. And babe, do you mind facing the direction of the light? So right now we are at about um, four. The setting of the, of the flash is at four. Maximum of this one is 10. And let's take one shot. So it's underexposed. Let's make the flash stronger. I put it about 70% power. It's actually okay. You see, you've got nice light there already. The background, however, I feel is a little bit underexposed. Now, I want to shoot this in black and white, so maybe I'll change my creative style already to black and white so that I have more or less an idea on how it's going to look when converted to black and white. However, I am shooting in RAW plus JPEG, so my JPEG files are black and white. However, my RAW files are still in color. So I will do that in post-production. I'll convert it in post-production. Okay, let's have one more shot, babe. So it's actually pretty nice. Still a bit underexposed. Maybe I'll make it 80% power. And let's do that one more. There. So it's okay. It's nice. It's beautiful. However, I feel that it still lacks a bit of the dramatic look. Now, how do we get that? We'll talk about, we'll basically use the concept of feathering light. So what is feathering light? Feathering light is technically making your light face away from your subject and just getting the edge part of the light to hit your subject's face. However, in this particular case, I will not feather the light this way. Rather, I want to feather the light this way. So if I feather the light this way, I am actually directing most of the light towards the backdrop and just feathering the light towards Coco and therefore, I'm actually lighting the short side of her face, giving this one more contrast. Now, the short side, lighting the short side basically means the light is coming from the side of the face that's opposite the one facing the camera. So let's take a test shot of, on how this one will look like. Again, my flash settings are still the same. Oops, sorry. So now it became a bit more dramatic. Look at that. Look at how all of a sudden it's just her face the silhouette is there. I think we're more or less there, but I would want to move the light a little bit more this way. There. And once we've tweaked it, I'm going to measure it so that you guys can see how, well, there. I think I actually like that. How about giving me more of your body? Not this way, this way, yeah. Then face towards the light there. Chin over here, looking here, there, that's it. Oh, that's beautiful. I actually like that a lot. But we're still underexposed. I'll make it 8.5, 85% power. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Or maybe I can move the light a bit more this way, still feathering the light and just pour, pointing more light towards the background. Oh, that's it. That's perfect. I like that already. So let's lock that in place. Then we'll fix the posing. But before that, Let's talk about the distance of the light to the camera and to the subject. So the edge of the light right now is, excuse me, babe, a foot away from Coco's nose. This light here from center is about four feet away from the backdrop at a 90 degree angle. Now, why is that important? Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to share there is an ongoing global photo contest by Viltrox 
which will end on June 10, 2023. They are giving away prizes worth $15,000. Now, if you want to know more about this photo contest or if you wish to join, I will put the link in the description below. Because we have the main power of the light basically hitting the background and we are feathering the light. The light, the, it's basically just the excess light that's hitting Coco's face. So that light is generally weaker than the one hitting the background. That's why we're able to get a whiter background and still keep Coco at proper exposure. So what else do we need to measure? Nothing? I think we're good, right? Sorry, Coco just said if I did the light to the camera and I don't think I did. So the light to the camera is about, again, 58 inches. So 58 inches here, 58 inches to Coco. All right. And then the entire space, and let's just do this since we're measuring everything. The entire space that we're using now, from floor to the very end of this camera, is about three meters. So within 3.5 meters, we could do this in a relatively small space. All right, so let's start shooting. Baby, move here, please. Body going here, then profile going there. And give me a more intense pose because this is very dramatic. That's it, that's perfect. Chin up some more. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. How about this shoulder is the one that's dropping. Your right shoulder is the one that's dropping. The right shoulder dropping towards the light. There, that's it. Chin up there. Fantastic. Twist your body a little bit more. Twist your hips. Nice. How about facing the light? Oh, I like that. Let's play around with that first. Okay. More intent. Perfect. How about now your entire body facing the light? And doing the same, more or less, pose. Your right shoulder towards me then. No? The opposite, yeah? Break, uh, can you lift up to your right hand, that's it. Then flare out your elbows a bit. No, your right elbow, sorry. Nice. Beautiful, I love that. I love that. I love that. And basically, that's it. That's how simple it is to create a beautiful, dramatic image with one light in a very limited space with just a basic white wall. Thank you very much again, babe. Now, let's just go through everything again. I have a light here. Any light will do. I have a modifier. You just need a relatively big modifier, but not really over, oversized modifier. I think even anything between 85 cm to 125 cm will do. And I have it more or less within uh, 58 inches of each other. That's basically how we shot this image. Very, very simple. Something that you can actually do in your small home studio. Now, of course, I wanted to get as detailed as possible, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you like this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell. Okay, till the next video.